Hi, it's Shafafi! And today we're going to be making chicken empanadas. So we're going to be starting out with a hot pot. <laughs> and we're going to use some canola oil. And so we're taking one of our cooking spoons and we'll add about two. Where I'd like to add my bay leaves to my oil, let it brown up so that I know that my oil has a bit of flavor. They're green and I want them to become brown. Just a few. And then I'll add that into that until they become brown. Okay, so basically the, the bay leaves are a bit brown. And what I'm going to begin to do is start adding my sofrito. So I added about two spoons full of the oil. And I'm going to do three full spoons of the sofrito. And let that cook up, brown up a little bit. Put that in there. This time around with the sofrito, I added a little bit of African um, peppers um, to give it kind of a kick. African peppers are very, very hot. I just added about two of them in a large jar. I've added red peppers, Italian green peppers, regular green peppers, and yellow peppers. Sofrito can be made in many different ways. There's onions, garlic, no add tomatoes, because tomatoes can make it mushy depending on what you're cooking. So I separate my tomatoes in another jar with some onions. Okay, so as you can see in the sofrito, they formulated crab holes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add ground chicken. And so we're talking about a pound of chicken, which is probably about 3 dollars or something like that. Um, you can get it for about three bucks. And I'm going to face it down. I'm going to put two packs. And what we're going to do is we're going to start mixing this up to incorporate the sofrito. So we're going to mix that in and we're going to cook it until it becomes brown. Halfway in between, we're going to start adding some other spices in, in there. But for right now, since it's pink, we're just going to keep turning and turning until... We've incorporated all the sofrito and all the parts of the chicken. We'll cover it for a few minutes and let that kind of simmer so that it's incorporated in there. And then we'll start adding our spices. Okay, so now we're browning up the meat. Kind of looks green because of the sofrito. <laughs> so browning up the meat means cooking the meat so that through and through that it's thoroughly cooked and I'm banging it down because I want to break it down and have loose meat and one of the things that were of a concern was how much of a temperature or how much on this stove would you use to heat up so I'm right now for my eight I'm on six because I want this meat to thoroughly cook not only that, but I'm going to start adding my spices and the little juice that's out in the bottom will start boiling up and actually simmering down so that it would be less water in there sometime or another. Okay, so as that's still cooking and I'm breaking down the meat, 
I'm going to be adding a number of different spices. So I raise the heat to six from four, and I'm going to be adding some garlic powder. And I see I have an opening, so I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to add about two heaping tablespoons of garlic powder. I'm adding my favorite spice of all is onion powder, which is also not open. And we're going to be adding about also two heaping spoons of, two heaping tablespoons of onion powder. And so this comes out a little bit different. It looks a little bit thicker. But what it does, it gives it the salt that you need and some really awesome flavoring. Okay, we're going to be adding some Italian seasoning, and we'll add about a teaspoonful of that, That's basil, and all awesome spices like oregano, and rosemary, parsley. We'll be adding about half a teaspoon of black pepper. We can get it out. There we go. And adding some sazon. You can add up to three packets of this stuff, depending on how much you use for coloring, a little bit of salt, Spanish kick. I'm going to add one because I have a special um, concoction that I made with some sasong, so I don't want to double up knowing that I already have that. But for now, we're going to mix this. So as you can see, there's still a little bit of juices left over, but it's cooking in there thoroughly, and the spices are drying it out a little bit. So, a nice aroma. Still banging at the bottom, banging, banging, banging to kind of chop it up because we don't want clumps in our empanada. So, oops, there goes that. There we go. This is where we could tell where there are clumps. We break it down. We're going to be adding some oregano, a pinch or two, which probably makes about a teaspoon. So, here we go. Good. Add to that. You should smell that. It smells good. Here I have a combination of bouillon chicken, sofrito, and all different Spanish spices all mixed together. And I'm just going to take from the bottom because on top settles the oil, but I'm going to take from the bottom to add to that. Okay. One, two, three. Mix that right in there. Get that chicken flavor going. Along with all that sazon. So feet all mixed up in there. As you can see, it's heating up now. Okay. And we're going to let that simmer for about three minutes. And then we're going to add one more concoction. So we got that going and nice and brown. We got it chopped up. Looking good. Fire is at five. On a high point of from eight. 
all the oil and juices from the bottom, uh, most of it anyhow. What we're going to do is we're going to add some ground fresh tomato with onions. That smells good. We're going to add about two and a half tablespoons. Since I added earlier. I'm going to spread that out. because what we want is a little bit of sauce in there when we bite into our empanada. Get it kind of saucy and juicy and all the juices flowing. In what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of salt. I know it looks like a little to you, but it's in a big spoon and I don't want to get it too salty. So I'm going to do that, mix it in there, and let that tomato sauce, tomato freshness down. And what you could do time and time again as it simmers, cooks up, is taste little bits and pieces of the meat to make sure that it's enough salt. So what you can do is just like that, and then just taste it. Now we can see what it needs, but only after your set time of simmer. So we're going to simmer this about maybe five minutes, and then we'll come back and then we'll let this meat cool off. So I'm going to be transporting this meat. As you can see, it's already cooked, not too wet. It's moist, but not wet. In the way that it's soaking up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a cool plate so that it can start cooling off before I put it in my empanada disc. Mm -hmm. I'm going to transport that onto this plate, spread that out, let it cool off, Mommy. and we'll see what happens from there. And I would say give it about 25 yes. minutes to cool off, Mommy. and then we'll transport it into the disc before we start frying it into... Alright, empanada formation. And so I'm going to begin stuffing the empanadas. But I wanted to show that you can buy any type. Goya is my favorite, but we're going to be using Trophy Rico. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a type that you can do as an hors d'oeuvre and or um, a meal. So we're going to begin with one here. This is one dis or disco in Spanish. We're going to cut it in half. it over, sealed one side, open it up here, and add some meat. Not too much to overstuff, but enough to do a pinch. Usually you can do a fork, but because of the dough, the way it's styled, it's a little bit different. And then put it back on the wax paper. Take the other one and begin the same process. Fold it over, pinch, open, stuff the cool meat. Make sure to remove the bay leaf from it. Pinch again, oops, excuse me. Pinch again. And as we're doing that, we're loading a, a hot a salt pot of canola oil so that we can fry them. So this is how we have it. If we're doing a full, this is how you would do it. What you want to do is open it in your hand, scoop some in there. Scoop more in there, and what you want to do is fold it over in the middle, 
then go back to the end and pinch all the way around preventing from the juices or the meat coming seeping through and what you will have is like a crescent moon the shoulder sides are so now we have a full and if you're not feeling comfortable with it being secure, what you can do is take a fork and press at the ends so that you have a fan-like seal. And that's how a full one would be. These are the halves for our derbs. We can do the same. Feel uncomfortable with the seal? Okay, so we took the disc and we divided it in half, and so we're making hors d'oeuvre in that there. Snap. If you take a whole disc, you can fry it up, and it would be something sort of like this. Maybe about two or three of them for a meal. But instead to pick on and to serve your guests. It would come in a pack of 10, one full. So divide in two, you would have 20. And so what we're going to begin doing is frying them until they become golden brown. And so I'll be inserting them in here in this hot pot of oil. And you can put about four. And as we're doing that, I just want to show you that as I divided them, what I use is the same wax paper that they put them in, in order to separate them so that they wouldn't stick together. And as they dry, they become a little bit less moist in order for them to seal. So now we're going to take this and flip this over because it kind of looks like it's sealing up. Some of them kind of open sometimes. I just have to be careful because the popping noise is what can happen. And we have the golden brown color that we're looking for. The only concern is that one of them is kind of sealed up, so we're going to tilt it over just a little bit so that it won't pop as much, releasing really its juices and oils. Being still able to cook. Okay, so we have a nice golden brown. We're going to remove this one because it looks a little unsafe, as you can see. It kind of opened up. So we will get that. And we will insert the next batch. I'm putting it on a cardboard because what I wanted to do is soak up the oils. So we begin adding four at a time. They're small. And we just want to cook them so they're golden brown on both sides. Adding them to the cardboard as they come out. What you can do is put the oil over them so they can cook faster. Oil is nice and hot. It's about done. I want to get a golden brown crust so that when we bite down, we have a nice crisp of a crust. Enjoy our meat patty or empanada. I'm going to start flipping it over. As you can see, it's brown. Or brown meat. It can be a light brown, so this is not white. And why we're putting them on the cardboard is because of the fact is that we want to soak up the oil so that it's not too greasy. That you're getting more of a crisp than you are of greasiness. 
frying foods or can be a very dangerous um, thing for the heart. I don't want to do that. So we're going to strain some of this oil out and put that on there. Lay it to rest. Okay, so we have a large empanada, which is one disc or one disc. And then we cut one in half so we can make hors d'oeuvre size empanadas. And what I did was I took out three different bottles of sauces that you can use to add to your empanada, which is the wasabi sandwich sauce, the mayo hot and spicy by Kraft, and then we have the horseradish sauce, which is also another spicy. It has this creamy flavor, and I kind of like them because it adds to the empanada, but also it gives it a nice bite. So I want to give you a, an idea of what I'm looking at here. And so I'm cutting one in half, and it's still nice and crispy. It has the meat inside, fully cooked, with spices and seasonings. Here I'm going to add one sauce. If I can get it out as usual. And what that does is just you can serve it up that way. One plain, one creamed. And you can serve this for lunch, dinner, as a snack. As something that the kids may want to eat in between while you're waiting for the big heavy meal to come along. And at the same time, it just kills the curb for eating the dinner that you want, you, you're preparing. And at the same time, it is an awesome meal. And also a d'oeuvre as well. The chicken empanada.